Well, hello, everyone. It's another Branches of Yah with Ancient Path Remnant. And we are reiterating the power of our words and our thoughts again. Uh, welcome, Ancient Path Remnant. Tiffany, thank you for joining me. Thank you. It's great to be here. I'm looking forward to this tonight. And um, the, this is such an important topic, as I always say, but everything in scripture has such a value. It's a treasure and it's important. And in the days ahead, this is going to be so important for people to understand. So thank you. Oh, it's a, always a pleasure. So I want to uh, start off with a little preface here, uh, a little caveat, if you will, that uh, for those that might be hearing this for the first time or certainly aren't sure where we're going with this, this is a kind of got a, a lot of spiritual connotations to it. And oftentimes when you bring up these spiritual matters that people have been trained away from looking at these things, they misunderstand what you're saying and misunderstand what you're bringing forth. So I want to reiterate which came first, Yah, then his son, all of this creation. <laughs> so we understand that if a pagan starts doing something or somebody who's of uh, earth worship, remember, Hashatan is an imitator, not an innovator. So he's never invented anything. So there are so many truths that seem to have been carried on. And then oftentimes, the Catholic Church, not wanting people to understand the spiritual nature of Scripture, would often say that you needed a priest to read it to you for you to, could not have proper understanding. And they discouraged you, and to this day still do, from reading Scripture or having a relationship with the Father through His Son and Messiah. And so as we go into these things, we'll back it up with scripture so that perhaps people can see what's really going on. Because if we discount everything based on the fact that somebody pagan or maybe even evil might have said it or used it in some way, then we would have to discount all of scripture because did not Satan himself say to the Messiah, scripture quoted it out in the desert that if he were to jump off the rocks, that he would not dash his heels upon the stone, that the Mal Malachim would swoop down and save him. And he quoted, he says, yeah, and you don't tempt Elohim. So uh, we we know that just because someone who is not of Elohim or walking in his ways is doing something does not make it of no worth or no value. A lot of times they're just imitating something and they don't even know where it came from. Well, I'll tell you where it came from. It came from our Heavenly Father and His teachings. And we know this because right from the beginning, the Ruach was upon us. I believe it's in uh, Barashith in uh, 6 3. And he says, And, and Yahuwah said, My Ruach shall not strive with man forever and is going astray. He has flesh and in his days shall be numbered 120 years. So we see that the Ruach was with man from the very beginning. And what's the Ruach's purpose is but to teach us all truth. What is the truth? Psalm 119 very eloquently puts the Torah is the truth. His word is the truth. Let every man be a liar, but only the word of Elohim is the truth. So we understand that this was from the very beginning. It was the Aleph Ta that was a Barashit, Bara, Aleph Ta, Elohim. It's Right from the very beginning, it's telling us that the Aleph Ta, the word of every word spoken, his son, was from the very beginning. So we understand nobody came up. There is no new matter under the sun. Everything that has been shall be again. No one's coming up with this on their own. This is perverting his words and his ways. So as we get into this, I'm going to bring forth a little bit of science to show you that it takes a long time for science off, often to admit that what was in Scripture was true, although they don't put it that way, but it was always there. So I'm going to read uh, about the relationship of the heart and brain, and it has been studied, and they're finding out that the heart, they always thought that the heart responded to the brain's commands. Yet, the idea of the heart as an intelligent perceptual organ dates back to ancient times. And some say the intelligence was more of a metaphor based on their studies. Researchers at the Institute of Heart Math propose that the heart and brain are a dynamic two-way dialogue. 
and they are continuously influencing each other's function. Now, they found this with the mRNA and more than that. And they say it seems to be the heart is actually physically involved and electrically involved as well in the processing of intuitive information and communication to the brain. So can you really know something in your heart? They say absolutely. They they can study multiple tests and they're not the only ones to see the physical basis of the emotional response. And they viewed random sequence of common or emotionally arousing images with their skin uh, conduits to electrical activity of the brain and the heart. And they were recorded and they viewed the pictures and experimental conditions. Um, they did uh, psychophysiological function and a physiological coherent state with heart rhythms, blood pressure, respiratory systems. And they held in a steady pattern for 15 minutes using the heart mass techniques. Well, the results were that the body can respond to an emotional stimulus prior to experience the future stimulus. In other words, the heart responds to an emotional information before the brain can even perceive it. So all of these studies already bore out what we absolutely knew from the very beginning from Scripture. And this is amazing when you think about it. It was telling you this all along in scripture. It says in Psalm 1914, let the words of my mouth and the meditation, the thoughts of my heart be pleasing before you. O Yahuwah, my rock and my redeemer. So we're seeing that this is nothing new, that scripture was always right. Your heart thinks, your heart has thoughts. The thoughts of my heart and the thoughts of my brain are two separate sets. They're actually finding out that all of your organs are able to, on some level, function independently with its own uh, neural links to one another, passing information back and forth. So let's get into a little bit of cellular biology here. There are thousands upon thousands of receptors in each cell of our body, and each one is specific to a peptide or a protein. So when we have feelings of anger, sadness, guilt, excitement, happiness, nervousness, each separate emotion releases its own flurry of neuropeptides. And these peptides surge throughout the body and connect with those receptors. And then they change the structure of each cell as a whole. So whereas it gets interesting is that the cells actually divide. And if a cell has been exposed to a certain peptide more than others, the new cell that is produced through its division will have more of the receptor that matches with that specific peptide. Now, this obviously is trying to give us the scientific speak for what is already in scripture. But it's likewise, the cell will have will also have less receptors for the other peptide so that its mother or sister cell was not exposed to as often. So thus, you've been bombarding our cells with peptides from a negative attitude. You are literally programming your cells to receive more of those peptides in the future. And even worse, we're lessening the number of the receptors of the positive attitude peptides, making ourselves inclined towards negativity. Now we'll go into a little thing here to see how our intentions and our words affect us. And I'll give you the scriptures. In 1954, there's a man named Roger Bannister. Now, prior prior to 1954, there had been a lot of runners and they tried to break the four minute mile and no one could do it. They kind of came close, but they just, no one could do it. The fastest runners of the time, no one could break the four minute mile to the point that so many had tried and failed that they said it could never, ever be done. It was impossible. And so everyone kind of went in there wanting to do it, but really understanding that this was a goal that was impossible. This was reaching for the stars. So he was the first man in 1954 to run under four minutes in a mile. And it's a feat, they said, could never be done. He believed he could. And each day he thought on it. He prayed and visualized it, and he spoke it out loud. His thoughts, his words, and his intentions brought it about. Once he did it, 46 days later, another man did it. And then it continued many, many times thereafter because they broke down that thought, that intention that everybody had been speaking continuously. It can't be done. 
They didn't believe it anymore. They saw it done and they no longer believe the lies, like the tell lie vision that we listen to every day, the programming that we're getting. So we see in Madith Yahoo 21, 21 through 22, and it, and it says, And Yusha answering said to them, Truly I say to you, if you have belief and have no doubt, you shall not only do what was done to this fig tree, but even if you say to this mountain, be removed and thrown into the sea, it shall be done. And whatever you ask in prayer, believing, you shall receive. Funny, that word prayer in Hebrew is kul, which literally is H6963, which means a voice or a sound. It's just amazing. We have Tibetan monks that were seen. There was a Swedish doctor named Dr. Jarl, and he studied um, at Oxford. In 1939, he made a journey to Egypt and for the English scientific study. And he was, uh, he was seen by a messenger that was a Tibetan friend who urgently requested that he come to Tibet to uh, treat a high lama. So he was a doctor, so he's asking him to come help this high lama. Well, he stayed there. He started building friendships with him. And as he did, they finally trusted him enough that they took him up into the North Cliffs, a very high cliff on one of the rock walls, about 250 meters high up off of this cliff. The sheer cliff was a giant hole. It was like an entrance to a cave. And in front of that hole was a platform, which the monks were building a rock wall. The only access to the platform was from the top of the cliff and the monks lowered themselves down with the help of ropes. Now, in the middle of the meadow, about 250 meters from that cliff was a polished slab of rock with a bowl-like cavity in the center. The bowl had a diameter of about a meter and 15 centimeters. By the way, they found these exact same kind of resonant because this is a resonant bowl in Egypt, all over Egypt. So there he found that they had these very long trumpets. They were huge. They were resonant metal trumpets and they had these drums of a specific and they were specific on how far back they needed to be. And they used these resonant bowls to, to push this sound. And what they found is they levitated by beating on these drums at a certain rhythm and blowing through these, these trumpets, they could levitate these gigantic rocks up a 250 foot cliff side and levitated all the way up to the, he thought he was under ha mass hypnosis. He couldn't believe his eyes. So he went back several more times and just to make sure. And he even videotaped it. So he take, he, when he gets back from this and he, he shows it to everybody, they immediately, the English Scientific Society marked it as classified and wouldn't allow it to be seen. But it's funny because we understand that everything is moved by the sound of our voice, by our words. We can change DNA. In Romans 10, 17, it says, And Amuna comes by hearing and hearing through the word of Elohim. And in Marcus eleven twenty four, 24, he says, Therefore, I say to you all things which you pray and ask and believe that you have received them and they will be granted to you. And four, as in Proverbs 23, 7, for a man thinks in his heart, thus he is. In Romans 12, 2, it says, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you prove what is right and well-pleasing and perfect desire of Elohim. Why does it keep giving us this over and over again? Philippians 4, 8, our favorite. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever, whatever is noble. Whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Why does it tell us to think about Scripture, to think on His name, to meditate on His name, to think about Scripture when we rise up, when we lie down, and when we walk by the way? Because we are renewing our mind. We are effectively resonating with the mind of Elohim through His Son. We are renewing our mind to be like that of his son. That is why we walk like him. That's why we talk like him. But it is that belief that can move things. 
People say, well, those are pagans. Maybe they were doing it through another means. There's nothing in scripture that tells us Hashatan could do anything like that. Matter of fact, we know that they said many, many will come to me in that day and say, Master, Master, did we not do all these things in your name? Cure the lame to walk, the blind to see, the deaf to hear, cast out demons. He says, depart from me, you without Torah. I, I know you not. So we see that just having the faith can do it. If we have but the faith of a mustard seed, the smallest seed, if you haven't seen a mustard plant, it's gigantic. It's huge. It grows into such an amazing thing. It really is. I, there, was a, there was a Russian scientist, and what they discovered as well, when, when we look at um, all of this, what they've said about our DNA. They said basically 90 to 95% is junk. Well, it's just not true. And they proved it. So they ch they found out that we can change our DNA with spoken words and phrases. So they changed and rearranged with spoken words and phrases. The key to changing DNA with words and phrases using the right frequency through the application of modulated radio and light frequencies. And they were able to influence cellular metabolism, even remedy genetic defects. I don't even think people understand like how big that is. Um, matter of fact, uh, Royal Raymond Rife in 1938, Ro Royal Raymond Rife actually figured out, created a machine and ran frequencies through it and verified, cured 18 life terminal ill cancer patients with frequency with sound. He cured them of their cancer. And it was verified by many, many, many scientists. And it has been done over and over again since, although they have suppressed this. It is, you can go online and look up Royal Raymond Reif. You are going to be stunned by what he did because it is our words that change everything. They change who we are. The more we speak like Yahushua, the more we speak like Elohim, the more we become like him. The more we speak to one another with that love instead of hate, we become like him. And this is what we're trying to do. That's why it tells us not to be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of our mind. And he says, and we know that our intentions also have consequences because they actually change us. In Matthew 5, 28, he says, I I tell you that anyone looking upon a woman to lust for her has already committed adultery with her in his heart. These aren't just some kind of sayings. These are actual physical manifestations of what you think, of what you say. Are that We have frequency and vibration. These aren't just scientific or esoteric teachings. These are what the word, the very words that are in scripture are in Hebrew are actually like poetry and are kind of sung like a song. They have a sing song kind of, and if you see them in Hebrew and you, if you went to um, a congregation and you heard them in, in Yisrael and you heard them, they, they are singing these verses. These verses are done in a cadence because that cadence is the way Hebrew is written. And if you look at the harp music that was turned from the, uh, from each letter and the music it makes, it's beautiful because it is the cadence of, of our creator. His words are a song to us, a love song, and they change everything. So when we speak negative th thoughts and when we have negative thoughts and speak negative things over people, we are actually physically changing the circumstances in which that person lives. Try it for yourself. Go get a bowl of rice, cook it up. Put you know in water. Put 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 it in a in a uh, mason jar and divide it into two, and go speak love to one and go speak hate to another, and see how quickly the one you speak hate to, Ma Masuro Emoto, as you know, Tiffany, that he proved this and it has been proven thousands and thousands of times ever since. So, sorry for being so long winded, but this is so important to understand. Science is just catching up with what Scripture has always told us. And it's about time we start understanding our words. We are, we're held accountable for our words. Why our words? Because, well, tell them, give them some scriptures, Tiffany. Well, yeah, I mean, 
We know that Proverbs 18.20, from the fruit of a man's mouth, his stomach is satisfied. He is satisfied by the yield of his lips. You know, life and death are in the power of the tongue. One thing I want to say, though, is that the enemy does have his way of um, his you know, his entrance into his spiritual realm Mm -hmm. where we know that if, if we're just doing like mantras or we're doing, you know, if we're speaking, um, what is it they do? They, they, it's like of themselves, they constantly say these words to, I am, I am powerful or I am this. Right. We know that that's of the enemy. Um, right. Because we have to go through the door of our Messiah. We have to be using the words of our creator and do it according to his will and his way. So we know that the enemy uses words and um, all these things for for evil. And basically, when what is that called when people do that themselves? They're like uh, their own mantras or they say that, you know, they are rich or they are powerful or they there's so many affirmations, positive affirmations. Yeah, positive affirmations, those things, when we're not speaking the word of Yahuwah, uh, it doesn't, you know, we, those people are reaching out to the the wrong spiritual realm. Right. So there is an aspect of this, um, you know, who, who are we, whose power are we drawing from, you know, our Messiah who takes us into that throne room, as we've noticed that, um, that even fabrics, even the linen that is spoken of in the Torah and in, in scripture and how the priest and high priest had to wear linen. Um, now, you know, we know that by some of the science of it, that linen is life-giving and there are life-giving words in scripture. There's life-giving food. There's, you know, there are life-giving things and then there are life-stealing things. Exactly. And and so um, when people use themselves as the altar, it's like self, I am this, I am that. That's of the enemy because, you know, our Messiah said anyone who goes through uh, a different door is a thief, a robber, a liar. And so the enemy has used all these things to pervert it and Absolutely. you know corrupt it. But when we use our father's life-giving words, when you know we're under the covering of our messiah his talit you know or his his uh zitzits, we i just learned recently that that means wings we're under his wings we're right. covered we're we are forgiven we are repent you know we repent of our sins we're forgiven we're covered by his blood we get covered and then we get to have access to these life-giving words that we speak um you know Proverbs 10, 20, the tongue of the righteous is choice silver. The heart of the wicked is of little worth. And, you know, our father's words are righteous and good. And so when we speak his words over us, rather than I am, you know, it's yep. like you are father, you are mighty. We give him honor and praise for what his words do that, that healing power within us. And, you know, I see that our Messiah did this. He's like, he 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 came to speak his father's words. He came to deliver his father's message. And it's like, if we're that those hands and feet, we deliver that same message. We deliver that same power, which is that promise of that agreement, those commandments that live and dwell within us. And uh, then we have access to this, this sword of the word to cut and divide and, you know, um, cleanse us of all unrighteousness. And, and we have the power of the Shalmaim. Otherwise we're using the enemy's power. Um, when we think it's of our own, of our own self that we're doing this, which is why it's so dangerous. I was actually looking into meditation. Um, not, not me to med. We know in scripture says to meditate on his word day and night. So there's a difference between meditating on the word of Yahuwah and meditation. And what I found out with people who do meditation, according to the world's meditation, that the side effects, you would not believe it's almost like they took a a pharmaceutical yeah. and the, the side effects they've opened a door a gateway into all these harmful effects some of the effects of people will say that they started having seizures and oh, anxiety yeah. they go into trances and yeah all kinds of negative things happen to them it's funny you mentioned that because 
most people think that the meditation of most of like the, the Buddhist and things like that is OM, like OM. It's not. It's A as in Aleph, U as in Ua or Wa, and M as in Mem. It's AUM, which just so happens to be the vowel sounds in Hebrew. Well, what they've done is they've taken those 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 things, those the the letters from the Hebrew, because it dates back. They even have it in some of their texts. It dates back to the Hebrew, and they've taken out those things. And what did they do? They removed the Heavenly Father from it. So what was initially him? He gave language. He gave it. What was initially of him, they removed. And that's the problem with all of these things. Even the science that is now coming to this thing, they're no way going to put the Father back into it. They're going to yeah. say this is something separate in of ourselves. We can do it. It's like, yes, you can. You can. That's the fact that your power, your words have power. We saw that in Bemidbar or Numbers 12 and 13 when they were uh, talking about the, the evil report. And they came back and they gave an evil report. And what happened? They started murmuring to the Israelites and the crowds and they started saying, you know, um, what has he brought us out here is starved to death, no water, no food, all these things. As they're speaking evil and getting them all stirred up, Yah's about to like just kill them off. He really yeah. is. So after they after they come back and say, you know, we were as grasshoppers before them, and as they as we were to them, they were to us. So they're saying these guys are giants, they're gonna kill us. There's no way. And then he starts saying he brought us out here to get killed. So what's he say in the end in 13, in 13, he says, he says, as they have said, so I shall do to the, as they said against me, so shall I do to them. So as we speak and murmur against him, as we are not in his will, as we are not in his desire, walking in his ways, we will have what we speak, whatever we say, we will have. He didn't say that was going to be great things always. So they, they spoke that upon their own heads. They heaped the coals upon their own heads by their very words. If they had come back and been like Caleb and Yusha, they would have said, they said, yeah, no problem. You're, if Yah's with us, no problem. It would have been a whole different story. Yeah, there's a completely different outcome when we believe in Yahuwah's word rather than just ourselves saying something. And it, in Proverbs 29, 20, do you see a man who is hasty in his words? There is more hope for a fool than for him. And so it's like we, we when we believe in his word, that is the power. When we believe in his strength, not by power nor by might, but by his ruach. This is so incredible to see that when we take a hold of mm -hmm. our Messiah, Zitzit, you know, just like the woman with the blood issue, it's like, if we believe in those commandments and that, you know, those vows, those commandments, those instructions that are good for our, our lives, it's we, that power that flows right through us to heal us. Those words, those commandments, those instructions are the healing factor to every cell and molecule of our beings. This is one thing that I've, I've come to understand is that we can do, you know, we can do so many things, but without that covering, without having been forgiven, without the atonement of the blood to cleanse us of all unrighteousness, you know, and repent and forgiveness, without doing that kind of work and then replanting the good seed of the word within us, um, without that, you know, if you think about a garden, and people are just continually trying to plant something within themselves and they're like a, a dry desert inside. They have no, you know, they're not tilled up. They don't have good soil inside. They just constantly say these, you know, things that they think are going to happen for them. The enemy is taking those words, you know, and able to take them because these people are uncovered. They're not covered yeah. in the commitment, the commandments, the instructions of our creator. And, um, so this is what's so powerful. Our Messiah said it's a narrow, narrow gate. It's a narrow door that leads to life. And few find it because everyone feels like they're, you know, they are the uh, mighty one of their lives. They, you know, it's a selfie generation. It's, you know, me, myself, and I. Yeah. And that, that a lot of times is the beast. 
that's the beast. We can look in the mirror and see the beast. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and, and and we said, we have said it a few times. I'll say it again. I don't, I'm not convinced Satan's even alive anymore because I don't think we need him. So many brethren out there accusing brethren. What do we need him for? And that's, you know, the world already accuses us. Now we have the brethren doing it too. So yeah, we are, we, cause we lifted ourselves up in our own eyes to be greater than we, than we, than we ought to be thinking we are. We're puffed up with a little bit of knowledge, but it is his words and his ways that'll lift us up in Proverbs 18, four a person's words can be life giving water. Words of true wisdom are refreshing as a bubbling brook. So, and, and conversely, we have, uh, twelve eight of Mishlayer Proverbs. There is one who speaks rashly, like he thrusts of a sword, but the tongue of the wise brings healing. These are these are quite not just figurative or metaphorical. It's quite literal. As I as I showed you, science is just catching up to the idea this, of what's always been known. Your words can heal. Your words can kill. And your words spoken in accordance with Yahuwah's will and desire in his Torah and his instructions, his guidance that he has given us, they're ultimately healing. It says, for without me, you can do nothing at all. We can't do it. Once we leave that covering, it's not that he's saying that you're incapable of doing anything. He's saying you have there's no value, no worth, nothing lasting. You can do nothing that is of that matters without him. There's no lasting effect. Shoal said that as well. Without love, all of the things that you think you can do, all your wisdom, all your words, all your knowledge, all your giving, all of it is worthless. So we understand that Yah is love. So we got to speak those words. It's it's so important. And we got to stop speaking against one another because when we speak against one another, we think, oh, we're doing his will. Because we're speaking against our teachings. Well, unless you are absolutely sure he has lifted you up to be a teacher, which he very strongly warns us about being thinking we're lifted up to be teachers. Not many of you should be teachers. You're going to you're going to fall under greater, greater judgment if you if you went wrong. So you better know you're right or we can just build one another up. We can lift one another up. We can be there for one another. It's so important. It's interesting in Proverbs 4.23, keep your heart with all vigilance for from it flows the springs of life. This takes us right back to out, you know, out of the heart flows all the issues of life. You were saying about the heart earlier and, you know, every issue flows from that place of, are we guarding his love? Are we guarding his word? Are we guarding his instructions in our hearts and minds that we're supposed to you know meditate on those things day and night and um train ourselves up be transformed by renewing our minds in his word this is where the power comes from it's it's from him and his the, the source of all creation who brought his son forth to you know so we could be forgiven and we can be healed and this is one thing that you know, I think as we move forward, we're going to learn that we're going to learn about this healing power that our Messiah had that, you know, that if we do have that belief as a mustard seed, you know, but will he find that belief on this earth when he, you know, when he, when they look for it, are they finding people who are bringing a bad report? Are they finding people who speak harm over themselves and truly don't believe the word? I mean, when the word tells me that, you know, uh, you know, all the issues of life come from what, you know, flows from the heart. And you said it's connected to the mind and it's all connected. It's like we received, it gets planted in the heart. So whose word are we planting in our hearts? Whatever you're taking into your heart. I, I mean, and we're going to give an account. I think in Romans in 14, it says, so then each one of us will give an account to himself, to Yahuwah. You know, in Matthew 12, 36, he says, but I tell you that every idle word, that people speak, that is a worthless word. That is the word you speak unconsciously. Those things in which you're not thinking about. They shall give an account for it in the day of judgment. So we, 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 <laughs> I mean, Colossians 4, 6 says, let your speech always be gentle, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how you ought to answer each person. In other words, taking every thought captive before we speak. 
Yeah. It's so powerful what you said. It's like we will be judged by every idle word we speak. And as I mentioned in the last video, um, I believe it was the last one, but you know, every everything's already been written. Who has already done the work? He's already written every, you know, everything's been coded already. There's already the code in our genetic material and our DNA, it's already there. We switch it on or we switch it off by the words we speak, the thoughts we think. And when we have Yahuwah's word in us, we have our Messiah as the vine growing as the, you know, the master strand of DNA. When we, when we replicate him in our lives, we become healed. When we allow our Messiah to be that master strand of DNA and we replicate him, we're replicating that within every cell and molecule. And that brings about healing. And what did he do? He kept his father's instructions. He kept the Torah. He kept the commandments. He, you know, he, he did exactly as his father wanted him to do. And then this brings that healing power within us when we replicate him. And he said, you know, by your belief, be it done unto you. And this is something so important. It's like when, when I hear people speak, sometimes it, they they doubt so much they've allowed the words of the world to infect their mind it's a virus of belief and you know that virus gets in just like a computer co you know in a computer and you get a virus in that computer and it needs to have that virus scan we've got to get scanned we've got to be transformed by renewing our minds and doing that virus scan daily repent of our sins and be forgiven and forgive others so that those those, you know, harmful seed moments can be removed and we can be healed. So it, it goes down to every cell and molecule. Every I hear people speak all the time harm over themselves. And I'm I'm thinking there are life-giving words and there are harmful death-destroying words. And he said life and death are in the power of the tongue. So it overflows from the heart what we actually believe. This is why our belief is so important because our Messiah said... I came to give you this life and give it more abundantly. I, you know, he came to heal us. He came to, yeah. you know, set us free of our bondages and who the son makes, you know, sets free is free indeed or makes free is free indeed. It's like, why are we not free from these things, these bondages, these, these, you know, life destroying thoughts, words, actions, and deeds. We should be set free. We should have we should understand the power that we have because he told us if you it says if you resist, but that word for resist actually means to stand against or stand up to. It says if you stand up to or stand against and oppose the devil, he shall flee from you. He has no power over you. But we don't claim that in our lives. We don't live it like that. We live it like he has some kind of control. Like he can he can tempt us into he can't tempt us into anything we don't already want to do. It's just a fact. And when we give him that power, we are we are relinquishing the power that Yahushua says, these things you have seen me do greater things than this shall you do because I go to the Father and I send the Comforter, the Ruach, to you. Greater things than he did, we will do. We can do greater things than the Messiah can do. He gave us that power through his Ruach. Amazing. Why are we not living like that? Why are why are why Why is it more often that we're injuring each other with our words? I mean, honestly, it, it makes no sense. That we're always doing that. And it's like, I think it's a Mishlei or tw Proverbs 25, 18, where he says, bearing false witness. That means speaking something that's just not true against the brethren is as a club, a sword, or piercing them with a sharp arrow. And Luke of 6, 43 through 45, he says, for there, there's no healthy tree which produces rotten fruit, nor, on the other hand, a rotten tree which produces good fruit. For each tree is known by its own fruit. For men do not gather figs from thorns, nor do they pick grapes from thistles. The righteous man, uh, the righteousness uh, out, of, out of the treasure of righteousness of his heart brings forth what is good, and the evil man out of the evil treasure brings forth what is evil. For his mouth speaks from the abundance of his heart. That which fills his heart is what he will speak. And so often we do not think about these things. We hear about, we hear one thing and we speak death, not only on others, but we, like you said, we are actually heaping coals upon ourselves. When we do this, when we speak those things about another person, when we act outside of, which we won't get into today, the administrative administration of 
of the judge, of the great judge, of the court system that he has set up. It is perfect. When we walk outside of that way, like you said earlier, Messiah came to give us eternal life. That's what he came to do. He came to lift us up out of the pit, out of the, the, the bondage of the fee of sin, which was death. It demands death. And he came to give us eternal life. He came to give us, that is the abundance of life he wants to give us. Ultimately, we are to have an abundance of life eternally with him. That is the ultimate gift he could ever give us. And yet we, I think we take it lightly. Our words seem to betray us. Yeah. Think about how many times we, we look at a situation and we see it as bigger than ourselves. And then we doubt, we completely doubt. I've done this so many times. We doubt what Yahuwah can do in that situation. And we, you and I have talked about giants in the land and we know there were true giants, but we also have to understand the spiritual giants. We fight now the spiritual war and that the spiritual giants are these hurdles, these, what we call mountains in our lives. Um, and you know, Yahuwah is greater and bigger than all those things. Our Messiah is greater and bigger. And, you know, that's why it says you can, you know, if you, you can move these mountains. You can move these things out of the way. If you believe you can do, you know, with the power of Yahuwah. This is the thing. When I stopped trying to act like it was my power or I was in control of something, and I gave all honor and esteem to Yahuwah through his son and by the power of the Ruach Kakodesh, when I started doing that, you can move things with the little pinky finger of Yahuwah. Like if you're in right standing, who can who can ascend the mountain of Yahuwah? Those who have clean hands and a pure heart. Get your hands clean and your hearts pure, and Yahuwah will move those mountains for you because you are you know you're you're like Abba, I need you, Yahuwah, I need you, my Messiah, I need you, I need the Ruach Hakodesh to help me, you know, give me strength, give me this ability to believe in you you know, increase my belief, increase it, you know, and then thank you, Abba, for moving these mountains. Thank you for removing all these things. Remember, he is the potter, we're the clay. So when we ask him for certain things in our lives, we have to understand he can change and move and, and do all those things. So when I stopped relying on myself to do it, and just went to Abba and petitioned him through my Messiah, then it was like, the world changed. The, the world changes when he does it for you instead of you trying to do it in your own power. And that's what the world is doing. They try to bring it about their own power. They think they are the mighty one. They are on the altar of their heart. They are the ones who are doing it. But Yahuwah is not going to be, you know, he he's the one who's going to get all esteem and honor and praise. And he, when he is the on the altar of our heart, and, you know, it's like you've got the father of all creation who's there to help you in every situation. You've got your Messiah there to help you. You've got the Ruach HaKodesh. It says, taste and see that Yahuwah is good. We're to taste this, this a portion of this eternal kingdom. It's far surpasses anything, but we're supposed to be able to even have a taste of it now by the power of the Ruach HaKodesh to, to taste these fruits of the spirit, this life-giving, these life-giving words in this gar garden of our lives that we bring about because we believe in his word and his word is true. And, um, you know, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That's first, uh, Yochanan one nine. It's, it's like, this is what we have to do. Clean our hands, purify our hearts, and by his power, by his Ruach HaKodesh and um, the blood of our Messiah, you know, we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. The word. The spoken word. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I don't think we understand this. I mean, like I said, because science has grabbed it, because these other religions have grabbed it, it's like, where do you think they got that from? That was that was known. That was written in our hearts from the very beginning, long before Moshe ever had to go retrain all the uh, Yisraelites in this. And Yah had to reintroduce himself long before that. It was written in us. It was taken from them for their disobedience. It It is so important. I mean, Psalm 141.3, 
is probably the perfect prayer we should all pray every day. It says, set a guard, O Yah, over my mouth and keep watch over the door of my lips. These are, that is just a great prayer to start the day with. Don't let me say anything. If I mean, uh, it also tells us that if you don't, if you're quiet, even a fool looks wise when he's quiet. Absolutely. Sometimes it's better just to, to, you know, pray about something and think about it before we speak, uh, to let, let time sort of, you know, let him reveal things in time. And then when his time is right, he'll reveal things. And then we won't be walking in our own, you know, thinking that we're the mighty one of our lives. We will be walking in his strength and his power. Um, you know, it says in Proverbs eighteen seven. A fool's mouth is his ruin, and his lips are a snare to his inner being, yep. his soul. It's, oh, you know, again, I want to go back to what we think about giants in the land. Uh, I'm talking about spiritual giants now, because we know there were physical giants. But I'm talking about the spiritual giants we don't even see, fear. We're, we fear something. We fear what the world's doing. Do we really fear what man is doing? Because he says that, you know, cursed is the one who trusts in mankind, who makes the flesh his strength and turns away from Yahuwah. It's like, you know, fearing man is a snare and a trap. He says, don't yeah. fear man. He says, man can only kill the body. Fear him who can kill the the, the, the body and the nefesh, the neshama and the and the nefesh. They kill both. Why are you Why are you fearing man? Who? What, can, what else can he do to you? What? Why are we fearing him? Fear Yah. Mm -hmm. That's the beginning of wisdom. That's exactly right. And when we know about fear, you know, when you sort of break it down more into what fear means is love, honor, reverence, and respect him in all things. When we give him praise, if you think about, you know, when we praise him, I was actually thinking about this the other day. I, I opened my window in the morning and saw all these little songbirds outside and they had like orange bellies and then some red birds all these little birds and i i looked it up and i was i found out there are songbirds and i was thinking um you know and i looked up a bunch of scriptures about singing a song to yahuwah yeah praising him rejoicing in him when we elevate ourselves to a place of rejoicing and praising him how can we be in a low place when we when we are honoring him and giving him praise and being that songbird, it was amazing how many scriptures were about singing to him or rejoicing in him or yeah. even rejoicing through tribulation or what, when people persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you. Rejoice! <laughs> like, yeah. all right, how do I do that? I got to take myself, you know, get myself elevated to a different mindset. Yeah. I've got to praise him instead of thinking all of this dark thing of people persecuting me. I've got to think of him, put my mind on things above, not on things below. Yeah, it, it's that's it. That Why renewing your mind? What are you renewing your mind to? Let this mind be in you. What mind be in you? The mind of Messiah. That is the mind we are to have in us. How do we do that? By saying the things he said, by thinking that what he, like you said, and we'll reiterate he said, I do nothing in my own. A son can do nothing of his own unless his father has given it to him. He said, what I, what my father has shown me, I have. And he never strayed from that. We, when we walk in that, we're under his covering. We are mighty and powerful because he has given us that power. He has given us that power through the Rock HaKodesh. But he also has given us the power because of our disobedience and because of our malice towards one, one another. The things that we do, I mean, in Colossians 3 it says, but you should put away all anger, wrath, malice, slander, and obscene talk from our mouths. Because in Proverbs 16, 24, it says, merciful or kind words are like a honeycomb, sweetness to the being and health to the body. So your soul and your body are healed by those words. We're healed by them. That's not metaphor. It's literal, as you saw in the beginning. Science has now backed up what Scripture has always told us, and we can verify it for ourselves. We can heal those relationships. If Yahusha came and showed us how to heal our relationship with his father, he gave us the words to say. He told us how to think. When he gave us uh, the model for how we should pray, not what we should pray, how we should pray, he gave us the key. He gave us a key to that door to enter in before his father in his throne room. How we're to put him first, 
the administration of it of it all, not clinical, but out of love, out of a reverence and a fear for his father to understand, to humble ourselves because it puts us secondary. It puts us firmly beneath the fact of who we're approaching. We have to have that reverence at all, that that fear of Yahuwah. And we have to love him with everything. It, there's nothing left out of that. It says love him with absolutely everything. Leave no part out. Nothing you own, nothing you are, none of your strength. Give it all to him. And love your brethren as you love yourself. Be a light unto all men. Love your enemies. These are the words we live by because these are the words that lift us up. These are the words that heal the body. That's amazing. Yeah, it's, you know, once we realize that the, all the issues of life flow from the heart, the issues of life, you know, out of the heart flows all the issues of life. There's a saying, I don't know where it actually comes from, but it says um, your issues go into your tissues. Mm. You know, it's let's read Yaakov 3, 5. So also the tongue is a small member, yet it boasts of great things. How great a forest is set ablaze by such a small fire. And the tongue is a fire, a world of unrighteousness. The tongue is set among our members, polluting and staining the whole body, setting on fire the entire course of life and set on fire by Gehenna. For every kind of beast and bird of reptile and sea creature can be tamed and has been tamed by mankind, but no human being can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil full of deadly poison. That is serious. Your tongue is a poison, not only to our own bodies, but to others. How much poison do we try to, you know, those fiery darts with our words, our tongues, just even over ourselves, how much do we speak harm over our life and our own situation? Yeah. And why are we doing that? Do we not have belief that our Messiah died to set us free, to set us free of the bondage of these things, of, of sin and death and this wickedness to, to allow us to have a taste of the eternal kingdom now? And so that we have this, you know, taste and see how good Yahuwah is. Why are we so, oh, ye of little faith, why do we doubt? It's just, why do we doubt? And I've, I've done it too. I have to constantly, constantly be renewed in my mind daily. I have to wake up and say, thank you, Abba, for this day. Thank you for this night. Thank you for this afternoon. Constantly putting that in the forefront of my mind, everything Thank you for the good that you provide. Thank you for everything you do for us. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You're planting that, and you will reap what you sow. Yeah. So we will reap whatever we believe. And this is why people don't understand that their belief is what has been written in the code. It's already written. It's everything we speak and say and do has already got a written outcome for that situation. We, we keep asking Yahuwah to change the situation when we need to change our mindsets. We need to change our belief. We're believing in the world and what they're going to do. We're, we believe that they're going to have any kind of power over us. Did anyone in scripture ever um, have any power over Yahuwah's people if Yahuwah didn't want it to happen? Nope. Yahuwah is sovereign over everything, and he, his will will be done. He created it with his word. And he can wipe it out with his word. It is yeah. like nothing happens Yahuwah doesn't allow in our lives okay. for a purpose, a season, and a reason. And once we understand that, once we decide to stop fighting against Yahuwah and what he's working in our lives and say, okay, what does this mean for me and how do I need to change my mindset, my the way I eat, the way I think, the way I speak, yeah. you know, my actions, yeah. what do I need to change? And um, that's the power of it. I get really excited about this topic. <laughs> oh, I, I do too. Yeah, it's funny you said your issues go down to your tissues. That's actually from Mishle or Proverbs 18, 8. The words of a whisperer like delicious morsels, they go down into the inner parts of the body. Yes. That's exactly where they, it's just a, it's just a reiteration of, of what's already there. Exactly. Yeah, Marcus 11 says, Truly I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be taken up and thrown into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart. Now, how do you not doubt in your heart? 
but believes that what he says will come to pass, it will be done for him. You know, we have to like believe down deep in our heart that Yahuwah has the greatest will for our lives. I, I honestly stopped commanding Yahuwah to do things. I used to be like, I command this, I command that. When <laughs> that is when I stopped doing that and I said, your will be done, Father. Thank you for what you provide. Thank you for the, the things that you do to, to correct me and change me. I want to be like my Messiah. I want to walk in that anointing and to be able to heal others. Whatever you got to do in me, then let it be done. Let your will be done. Because I know you work all things together for good to those who love you and are called according to your purpose. And so once we allow you to who to work in us inside, once we stop seeing everything as an attack, but actually try to say, okay, what is this teaching me about me? Let's look at ourselves first because our Messiah said, let's get the plank out of our own eye before we try to take the splinter out of someone else's. Mm-hmm. And so, but if we have belief, now, how do you have belief in your heart that Yahuwah loves you, that he sent his son to, to die for us, to set us free from these harmful mindsets, these harmful thoughts, words, actions, and deeds that mm-hmm. we have been enslaved to by the world, teaching us, you know, that evil is good and good is evil. He broke, he broke open the gates. He tore them down. He ripped them asunder so that he might set the captives free. He said he set the captives free. We're we like I said, who he sets free is is free indeed. We keep placing ourselves behind an imaginary gate that doesn't really exist. We do so with with our own thoughts and our own words against ourselves and especially against others. We just keep coals upon ourselves. And uh I think you mentioned this earlier in uh Mishlayer Proverbs eighteen twenty says in the fruit of the man's mouth, his stomach is satisfied. He is satisfied by the yield of his lips for death and life are in the power of the tongue and those who love it will eat its fruits. So we have a choice, life or death, whichever one you love. You know, it goes back to that old ancient uh, uh, Native American uh, first settlers saying that they have about the two wolves that you have an evil one and a righteous one and they're fighting and it says which one wins and it says the one you feed the most where do you think this comes from it comes from this very thought of the the our words whatever you feed the most whatever thoughts you feed the most whatever you give your attention to the most that's what the that's what the russian scientists and since then about six other universities here have also done these studies and found it to be absolutely true the more we feed on what the world is trying to feed us, the television, the programming, okay, the culture, the pop culture. It's a cult. They're cultivating us to death. We worship death when we follow the things of the world. Our words, our thoughts, and our intentions matter. They produce fruit. And Absolutely. we're going to be known by our fruit. By their fruit, you shall know them. You are producing, whether you believe it or not, whether this sounds like something crazy, scripture is rife throughout hundreds and hundreds of verses telling you this. Your words matter. Your thoughts matter. They all matter. It's not metaphorical. It is literal. Whatever we bind on earth shall be bound in the Shamayin. How is this possible? Because the spiritual world is the tangible world. This is a temporary thing. The tea in your can of iced tea, the tea inside the can is the tangible thing that does something. The can itself is nothing. It's just a temporary shelter, a temporary receptacle, a temporary place. That is our life. Our being is what is inside. It's not this fleshly body. Our words, our intentions, our thoughts, our meditations of our heart and our mind, both matter. Yeah, Psalm 1914. You may have already said this, but it's always good to reiterate. Please. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Yah, my rock and my redeemer. Hallelujah. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. What's acceptable to him? What what is in our heart? What are we planting? 
what is that planting ground and what are we allowing? Are we allowing the seed of the world to choke out the good of Yah's word within us? And once we understand these things, then then the healing comes. Then the 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 power of Shamayim is opened up in the storehouse of the heavens, you know, and we have access to that that you know that powerful place of where Yahuwah pours out his his favor upon us. Why are we not partaking of this? It's because of our doubt and our belief, our misbelief, and our words don't prove that we have any belief in his word. And once we change that, once we start actually believing him and not the lies of the world, then he will open up that healing. He will open up those things. You know, a lot of times people say, but I do believe, and I am walking in accordance to his will. And why are these things happening? Well, things happen because Yahuwah has to correct us along the way also. He has to change our mindsets, and he does that through life experiences, so we actually get a tangible experience of what is spiritually happening. And he, and, ha and he has to prune us. He has to he has try to us through the fire. <laughs> These are the things we're guaranteed. We're going to be pruned. We're going to be tried through the fire. We're guaranteed this. Yeah. Yeah, a, a soft, this is one of the best things that I ever learned. And I don't think I've mastered it yet, but I'm I'm striving for it. Proverbs 15, 1, mm. a soft answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. It's so easy just to react also, to react to situations in life. And to piggyback on top of that real quick, and I'll let you finish. It says in Psalm 101, 5, he says, Whoever slanders his brethren secretly, I will destroy. Whoever has a haughty look and an arrogant heart, I will not endure. Which that is a very humbling thing to think about because we think we do things in secret. We think that, oh, this person doesn't know what I'm doing or are saying about them, but Yah does. And we are still under judgment for the things that we speak, think, and do against ourselves and other people. We're not hiding from anything. We can't hide from anything. So that is a very sobering and humbling word to understand that no matter what we think we're doing behind cl closed doors, to, you know, gossiping and murmuring and saying bad things, we have to understand what we speak about others, we will be held under judgment for because Yahuwah hears it. He hears all things. Nothing is hidden. We're not hiding anything. And that's that's a sobering warning for everyone, for me as well. I, I want to, would you mind reading that again? Because we need to get that really seared into the conscience. Tehalimer's Psalm 101, 5. Whoever slanders his brethren secretly, I will destroy. And whoever has a haughty look, pride, and an arrogant heart, I will not endure. Wow. Yeah. And but and then Psalm 118:5 Out of my distress I called on Yahuwah. Yahuwah answered me and set me free. So there is this we have to humble ourselves. We have to realize that we've got to have clean hands and pure hearts before him for him to open up the healing in the storehouse. We have to have that belief that surpasses understanding that he gives us, it's his power, his strength within us, his Ruach in us that, that allows us to even, you know, the, I know I said it before already, but not by power, not by might of ourselves, but by his Ruach, he will strengthen us. Pray for wisdom, pray for strength, increase my belief, increase, you know, give me your strength in me to be able to speak your words, think your thoughts, remove all these harmful things from me so that I can truly have the amuna that can move mountains, the belief that can move mountains out of the way. Absolutely. You know, he tells us the heart of the righteous thinks on how to answer, but the mouth of the wicked pours out evil things. But in and that's in Proverbs 15, 28, and Proverbs uh, Mishle 21, 23, it says, whoever keeps his mouth and his tongue keeps himself out of trouble. Oh, look at this one, Proverbs 25, 15. With patience, a ruler may be persuaded. And a soft tongue will break a bone. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, 
wow, I mean, this is not what we've been taught in the world. This is not how we've been trained by the world to react. We've been trained to react in our flesh. He's saying act in a uh, fruitful spirit in the fruit of the Ruach, and it will keep coals on yourself and others, and it will, you know, purify with that fire, that burning fire of, you know, why are you different? Why are you different from the world? Why do you not act like the world does? Why do you have hope? Because that's our very amuna, our very belief that we live by. For faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not yet seen. But we give up too early. We give up too fast. Like you talked about the the 12 spies spying out the land, the promised land. Yeah. Ten, ten brought a bad report. Why? They did not believe Yahuwah could, after they had seen all that Yahuwah could do. Why could they not see that he is bigger than the, the giants in the land? If who is bigger than any spiritual giant we have, any anxiety, fear, any sins, any, you know, addictions, he's bigger than that. Our Messiah came to set us free of all those things to heal us. And we have to believe it. And we get set free when we believe and we speak it by our testimony You know, the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony are, you know, when people hear us talk, do they see people who truly have a belief that surpasses understanding? Or do they see people who are fearful of the world just like everybody else? Yeah, or gossipers or slanderers and all that. What are they seeing? I mean, what what is happening out there? It's, you know, Proverbs 2019 talks about that. It says, whoever goes about slandering reveals secrets. Therefore, do not associate with a simple babbler. Mm. I, 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 you know, our tongue plots destruction like a sharp razor. It's a, a, a worker of deceit. You know, it's amazing. A fool's mouth is his ruin and his lips are a snare to his being. I mean, these things are, we have to understand what... Uh, with with his mouth in Proverbs eleven nine, with his mouth the yawless man w- would destroy his brethren, but by knowledge the righteous are delivered. What knowledge? Knowledge. His knowledge. His knowledge. His righteousness. His ways, which are higher than ours. His thoughts, which are higher than ours. Yeah, that's why I always pray that Yahuwah would remove from me anything that's not of him remove it remove anything you know let let your will be my will let i want my will to be your will i want to reflect you in all things these are my prayers that that it's thought of me it's him that we humble and you are humble and contrite before him and realize that we're not powerful you know we're not we're not the power we're not the ones who are to get the esteem But when we put our hope in him, there's something so powerful about that. As I said, when I used to think that, you know, you cast all these demons out and you do that, you know, I command. Well, yeah, you can do that. But in the in the name of our Messiah or in the name of Yahuwah, you can do that. But when I started saying, Yahuwah, remove, bind these up and remove them from me. Oh, my goodness. You don't fight anything. You don't have any fights. It's like you just rest in him knowing he's doing the work. Be still. Be still and know that he is Yahuwah. By the finger of Yahuwah, you cast out demons. By the finger of Yahuwah, you overcome. By the blood of our Messiah, we overcome all these things. We are more than conquerors. You know, we are more than conquerors. And you're right. When we when we try to take that when we try to take that administrative power onto ourselves. It's just like the demon that they were trying to cast out. And they say, we knew him. <laughs> we know Kepha. We don't know you. Who are you? I mean, could you imagine? You're, you're sitting there trying to cast these things out because they're saying, we, I command you. It, it's at taking that that is a, something of you. Mm-hmm. And it's like, well, they knew him because he worked in the administration of Yahuwah. They worked within his word. And so yeah. they had no choice. <laughs> there was no there was no arguing. Sitting there arguing. Who are you? We ain't moving. <laughs> exactly. 
Uh, you know, there's a direct command about this too, about how we, like I said, the, the accusers of the brethren are the brethren more so than anyone else. In uh, Waikra Leviticus 19.16 says, you, you shall not go around as a slander among your people and you shall not stand up against the life of your brethren. I am Yahuwah. In other words, you're not. I am. I'm the one who stands up against the life of the brethren if they're out of my obedience, if they're out of my love, if they're out of my mercy, if they're out from under my covering. I'm Yahuwah. You're not. <laughs> yeah, we see that in, in Job, or Job, where, you know, Job really couldn't understand why he was going through what he went through. And Yahuwah had to show him. You know, well, what he feared, what Job feared came upon him because he couldn't, that was unfruitful. And so, but Job never really understood Yahuwah until he went through those things. And this is something people always think, oh, the devil is attacking me. No, Yahuwah has allowed things to come into our lives in order to prune us, shape us, transform us, change us, to strengthen our belief. Um, the the enemy comes in to tempt, test, and try us. How do we respond to those tests? But Yahuwah allows a, you know, a pruning, a shaping. So everything that happened to Job, Job, was at the hand of Yahuwah. Nothing the enemy did could go beyond what Yahuwah had had spoken. Yep. You cannot go past this point because Yahuwah knew what Job, what Job needed in his life. Now, it seems very extreme to us, and it is. It's like, but sometimes we may look and say, why are these things happening to me? Does Yahuwah really love me? Well, he, you know, we cannot doubt his love. This is what the issues of the heart, the, out of the heart flows all the issues of life. Guard his love in your heart to know that everything he's doing is for a benefit, a purpose, a season, a reason to help to maybe help someone else to prune us so we're more fruitful. Think about how much more fruitful Job would be, Job would be after, you know, his double portion was then restored and after he had gone through all that, his fear was gone. He had gone through it. He had gone through the valley of the shadow of death. Yeah. And, and like you said in the beginning, he he had fear. He already had part of his heart was given over to his fear. He feared he would lose his family. He feared for his children. He was praying for them constantly. He feared his greatest fear, which means he was thinking upon it, maybe speaking it. His words came to pass. He, yeah. fe he feared losing his money, losing his flock, losing his standing, losing his his all of his family, all, all of the things he feared. For that moment, he he didn't have trust in Yahuwah for at least there was doubt. And we all have it. We all get we all have doubts. I mean, I think in Yaakov 3, 2, he talks about for all we stumble and we all stumble in many ways. If anyone doesn't stumble in what he says, he's a perfect man, able also to bridle the whole body. We all yeah. stumble. We have all fallen short. All of us. But, and this goes back, we got to, you know, focus on our thoughts and our intentions of our heart. If we're filled with him, his words, his Torah, and the meditations of our heart and our minds, each individually are upon him at all times. Now, obviously, when you're working, you have to pay attention to what you're doing. But every chance you get to be thinking, talking, and working on keeping his his word treasured up, protected, shamar his word. We're to shamar it. We're to protect it. We're also to shema related. We're to hear it, to incline our ear, to intently listen, to take it in to our hearts. And then we're to act on it as that heart gives, gives the signal to the brain. The heart says, tells the brain, act. The brain then says, act. We're to guard it, treasure it protected at all costs and this this has implication throughout our whole bodies because we know that there are chemicals that flow like these chemical reactions these hormones and different you know 
chemicals within the body that um, cause us to either be, you know, life giving within or cause health problems, blockages and things within our bodies. So if you think about out of their innermost being shall flow rivers of living water. That means it's a flowing body. It, it flows freely. It flows in a, in a life-giving, health-giving way. So then if you're flowing in a life-giving way and you have that love of you who have guarded within you, wouldn't that be able to then be poured out to others just like our Messiah and his deep seats? That love of Yahuwah pouring, flowing through him, that spirit, that ruach of healing and health, that these words are life or death. We get to speak life or death over our situations. We get to have a testimony or we get to be defeated by the enemy. And so, you know, how are, are we allowing that love to flow? Are we guarding his love within us? to know that no matter what, we will praise him. No matter what we go through, we will honor him. We will give him praise. We will esteem him. You know, this is where you get raised up to a different mindset and you get lifted up out of that darkness because when we praise and honor him, our minds aren't in that, you know, bottomless pit anymore. We get raised to a new level of life and we can, you know, have that, internal garden grow within us to get to taste the good fruit of the land that internal condition that no matter what's going on on the outside no matter what's going on in the world you're good you're good you're founded on the rock you've built your house a wise man building his house upon the rock that foundation of truth yeah we're not guaranteed that we're not going to ever go through anything. We're guaranteed we will, but we are certainly guaranteed to be out of his wrath. Absolutely. I, it's, I, I, these are just such important things that we need to think about how powerful our words are. The old idiom of uh, sticks and stones might break my bones, but words will never hurt me. And that's not true. Sticks and stones might break your bones, but you'll heal. Yeah. But words are forever. They create, they destroy. Scripture says it's true. Yah says it's true. And science is just starting to catch up or just starting to let little tiny bits out without Yah in it at all. It's true. There's no doubting it. There's no getting away from this. We can either lift and build or we can break and destroy. It's our choice. It's our choice. Yeah. In, in, in uh, Ephesians 4.29, where it says, let no corrupting talk come out of your mouths, but only such as is right for building up as fits the occasion that it might give favor to those who hear. Yeah, Proverbs 17.27, whoever restrains his words has knowledge, and he who has a cool spirit is a man of understanding. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's... It really is. You know, I've known people who spoke, you know, death over their situations or negativity or harm over their own situations. And then they wonder why they never get, they never overcome those things or why their situations go from bad to worse because they, they continually speak harm over their situations. And I know a lot of people have uh, other people speaking death words over over them or giving them you know a certain amount of time to live or diseases and you know people are making vows with those things and it's like um well what does Yahuwah's word say yeah what am i going to speak what am i going to believe and what am i going to make an agreement with on this earth and and am i going to make an agreement with Yahuwah's word um where messiah said you know by his stripes we are healed and made whole yeah or like you were, you had mentioned uh, another time that they used to have, they have dirt, different kinds of cakes, death by chocolate, something to die for. We don't understand that these words actually mean something and they actually create. We we use words so cavalierly with that, that we don't even realize what we're saying. We're speaking death into our own life. Even the word death itself is so low in its vibration it it's not love being the highest vibration now the, again these are just our terms for what this is 
But these are words of Yah. They're words of life and death that we, we, we need to take hold of and understand what we're saying. The words that we say matter. Your idle words matter. The words that you don't really mean anything by them, they matter. You're not thinking about what you're saying. They matter. They do. Yeah, because it's our very belief. What we speak out overflows from the heart. You know, our Messiah said that. And it, it's like, what is our true belief? Do we believe you who loves us? And no matter what we go through, it's he He has us. He ha He's got us in his loving arms and his loving hands. And this is why we have to believe that we can move mountains in that way, you know, spiritual mountains. And, you know, it does. It's interesting. I I do believe that he can reach back in time and change scene moments, change moments of time where, you know, something happened. He can he can change those things. And he's not limited by time and space like we are. He's not limited by going back into the past and changing. That's why we repent for generational curses. Yeah. We have to repent for generations of things that have happened that have polluted our genetics and our DNA and, um, and be forgiven of those things and then allow something good to be planted in those places. And remember, he said we are a planting place for his name. What is his name is in our DNA. It, it just goes so deep. It's like once we understand these things, we are his garden. We are his, his, uh, you know, we are the kingdom. Uh, he resides in us. Every single cell in our body, every single thing. That's what I'm saying. People don't really understand how the human body works. But one thing they do fully understand is every single cell in our body is a command center of its own. It does not have to have your brain telling it what to do. Your brain is not the ultimate command center. It is part of the system. But every single cell, why? Because he is infused within us. He is in us. He's commanding the body. It is. A, he has commissioned us perfectly to understand this. We don't have to be sick. The man found the frequencies that he cured diseases. Well, guess what? His words have frequencies. They have vibrations, words of love, words of building, Words of encouragement. We're more than conquerors. We have to believe that. We're more than conquerors through him who loved us. We're more than conquerors. We are victorious. If we stand, if we oppose, if we stand against the devil, if we stand up and put our dukes up and say, come on to it, he's going to run away. When will we stop where we don't believe that? When are we going to stop disbelieving Yah's word? We have to yeah. believe it's true. We have to believe it, and it affects us on what we're calling a cellular level it affects us beyond what they even they can't even see there's not a microscope that can see we've never seen an atom that picture of an atom is not an actual picture it's a cartoon we don't know what it really looks like we've never truly seen one but guess what each particle seems to know exactly what to do it follows the instructions and it does things and we can see with the masuru emoto's work that our words our thoughts and our intentions, because some of his things, he didn't say a word to it. He just thought it at it and it changed the structure of that water. We are changing the structure of our mind. We're changing the structure of our being with our thoughts, with our intentions. And when we focus on Yah, it is impossible. When we are under his covering, when we are in him, it says he it is impossible to sin when we're in him. Yeah. We have to stay in him so that we don't. We have to stay in his word. Let this mind be in you. Be transformed by the renewing of our minds. We have to renew, refresh, pray without ceasing. When you rise up, when you lie down, when you walk by the way, this is every single day of your, of your living fleshly life. Mm -hmm. All day. All day. Yeah, it's a... It's a communion all day long it's we should be asking and praising him all day um you know you lose your keys oh but where are my keys you know like have him be a part of your day yeah all the time like it's not just oh i'm gonna pray and then you know and then go about my day literally i get in the car thank you abba for your protection you know it doesn't have to be a you know, do your prayers in the morning, do some in the afternoon, do some in the evening, but then all day, just praise him. Thank him for protection. Pray over your food and water. Yes. Thank pray him over for your, the air. Pray over all, the land. 
Yes. Well, I, you know, once we start to understand that when we have his power and we are asking him, he is, he is so, he wants that. He wants to dwell within us and love us and flow through every cell and molecule and heal our inner being and bind up our wounds. But father wouldn't. And our Messiah died for it. Uh, you know, so we've got to be a people that tra- get transformed by renewing our minds allowing this transformation to happen where the, the enemy wants to transform people into, you know, that image and likeness. Well, we need to be transformed into our Messiah's image and likeness, which is the image and likeness of our father and be filled with the Ruach HaKodesh and just, you know, be a, a different kind of people than what the world is. We have to be different. And that is starts with our belief, our Amuna. What do we believe? Abba's word, yep. his word, every word that proceeds out of his mouth. Yeah. Psalm 91 um, talks about that. 91, 1 through 16. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. And I will say to you, who are my refuge and my forest, my Elohim in whom I trust. For he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his pinions and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and a buckler. You will not fear the terror of the night or the arrow that flies by day. That's a, a psalm that I pray actually every day for the probably the last two or three years. He, he told me to, to do that. I say that one every single day. It's it's incredible. You could, you know, if you don't know what to pray, it's there are scriptures that will just lead you right through a prayer. Yeah, his yeah. his word his word does not return to him void. So it, it it works for us. And again, this is more speaking the intention of our hearts. He knows what we want before we've said it. How? Because he knows the intention of our heart. Our heart might deceive us; it can't deceive him. So if we're focused on him, if our words, our thoughts, and our intentions are upon him the entire time, our hearts can never deceive us. No. Yeah, so we have to speak new life, and then we'll reap what we sow. And that's that's the important thing. What are we allowing to be planted in the garden of our hearts? And it grows, you know, in our minds, and and that is the the life we will have to be satisfied with the fruit of our lips. And so, and it goes down to every cell and molecule. It it has to do with our health and how we can even you know help other people if we're not healthy ourselves or if we don't have a healthy mindset how can we help someone else and if we don't overcome anything how do we ever have a testimony if you don't have a test so it's like yeah it's also important sure is i just i i hope everyone hearing this is really understanding how important this is so important it is it's everything. It is life and death. It is life or death. Yeah. What we speak, what we think is the power of the tongue. Wow. Wow. We have that power. Do yeah. we realize that? Do we realize what we speak? <laughs> think about how many times people say, I have such and such. Yeah. Why are you speaking that over you? You made an agreement with it. People don't like to hear those things. Oftentimes they don't understand that that is an agreement with sickness or disease. This is with Yahuwah. We need Shalom. Shalom is, is a healer. When we have Yahuwah Shalom, we have, we begin to be healed. We, that we're not at dis-ease anymore. Right. With him. So. Oh. Yeah. I want to say in Psalms 138, I love this one too. It says, I give you thanks with all my heart. Before the magistrates, I sing praises to you. I bow myself towards your set apart Hikal, and I give thanks to your name for your loving commitment and for your truth. For you have made great your word, your name above all. That is the name above all names. On the day I called you, you did answer me and made me bold with strength in my being. Let all the sovereigns of the earth give thanks to you, O Yahuwah, when they shall hear the words of your mouth and let them sing of the ways of Yahuwah, for great is the esteem of Yahuwah. 
Though Yahuwah is exalted, he looks on the humble, but the proud he perceives from a distance. And though I walk in the midst of distress, you revive me. You stretch out your hand against the wrath of my enemies, and your right hand saves me. Yahuwah does perfect me. Oh, Yahuwah, your loving commitment is everlasting. Do not forsake the works of your hands. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah, this is something that I think we'll have to continually reiterate because it's just something that we we need to continually be reminded of because yeah. we all fall into that mindset again, that old pattern. And it's a continual renewing of the mind so that we can walk in the newness of life, you know, walk in that righteousness and walk in that triumph and victory over the enemy in our lives. So it's a continual reminder every day. Just be encouraged. Absolutely. There, there's always hope. Absolutely. Well, sis, I think we've hit on this good tonight. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Well, we uh, thank you for having me on again, and I enjoyed it. And we'll just keep uh, bringing this same kind of thing forward because I think moving forward, this is the spiritual war we're in. Uh, it's a belief. So this is spiritual warfare, basically. Yes, absolutely. And I pray that everyone who heard this really hearkens those verses and, and maybe sees them and hears them in a new way. Maybe realizes these aren't just wisdom of Elohim, but it's real. It's true. Everything affects you. Everything you say, think, and do will affect you. Absolutely everything. It's so important. We need to build up and not tear down. We need to speak words of purpose and not worthless words. We need to take every thought captive. It matters. Matters to him, and it'll matter to us. So, with that, we say, and sis, I'll let you take us out. If uh, we might be so fortunate to see you again, yeah, we uh, we're so grateful for everyone that listens, and you are loved by our Creator, and we are to love one another. And um, hope you have a beautiful, beautiful day or evening or whenever you watch this and just be encouraged. And we will catch you on the next one. Yeah, willing.